on behalf of the City of Vancouver and the rest of our local host community. And so actually I'd like to uh, have a round of applause for, for your host chair of our local uh, host committee from, from, uh, from the health uh, research and professional context of the world here in Vancouver, Dr. Megan Winters.
of how much of it is really for all age and ability, especially when we think of Moby and new people cycling uh, for the first time. And then this is really encouraging for us as staff. By engaging uh, Vancouver, we've actually recognized that uh, while sometimes the process is hard in terms of doing new infrastructure, over half of Vancouverites want more of the higher quality bike infrastructure. And so some of the big strokes and moves we've been doing in terms of designing for all ages ability and the spectrum that it is, which many of you are already doing in your cities and, and regions, um, one is we continue like Hornby to transform. We continue to upgrade our bike routes to being for all ages and ability. Um, so here you go on Union Street if you're not getting out there. And also making sure we're targeting the ones that we're going to get safety addressed at the same time. And then again, the health partnerships, the having the before and after evidence, to be able to go to our mayor and council this May and say, here with great UBC and SFU and local researchers, we're able to document the $5 million investment on the Comox Greenway has had health benefits. And so here you go, a walking environment, not just a new sidewalk, but a place, a place for greening and, and opportunity to connect socially. That's my favorite health word, social connectedness. Okay, so and then, um, and then as staff, um, really again, it's a blessing. Council will talk about political leadership, but as staff, we've just been empowered to sort of big, bring big ideas. And so when we're brainstorming, hey, could we possibly think of closing an arterial street to 10 to 12,000 a day? Maybe if we can show that the rest of the arterial network can handle it. And voila, now we have a point grid road that's now 500 vehicles a day, and immediately we saw a tripling in the number of people cycling. And it's not just the people, it's the opportunity for them to see the waterfront, to see the North Shore Mountains. And then not stopping there, a book ending it with this great project that we're in Cornwall, where we did the first protected intersection in, in North America, and again, being able to quickly show that the number of people cycling has grown by over 30% just within the first year. And we're not stopping there. Right now, we're actually rebuilding the North End. Sorry about that if that's on your mobile work tour, but it's going to take us a year to do that. But come back and, and see that in, in, in a short time. But it's not about infrastructure alone. And so we're just diving more with our team into understanding behaviors and perceptions. And so we've done a deep dive, both for walking and cycling, with, with our online uh, panel survey. And so this is a great validator. I mean, walking is often referred to as, as being recognized as good in Vancouver. But now we have the connection that people are seeing that as good for their health. And so then we can keep referring back to that. And then we all have our own now metric of interested and concerned. And so this is ours. So again, we can go out in our public processes and say, hey, we've engaged you as, as a citywide audience. And you're saying, 56% of you are saying, we don't want to be mixed with traffic. And so uh, finally, addressing barriers. And the number one for us is dealing with safety. We are, like many of you, Vision Zero, working towards uh, zero fatalities. And so really caring about the active transportation modes and, and responding to that as, as, as kind of first and foremost. Uh, but again, even this report card that I'm referring to is, is about more efforts that we're making here as staff in the education and the promotion. So that walking and cycling aren't seen as kind of not only the preferred ways to get around, uh, but also normal. And so to conclude, um, I can't help resist, uh, but some context in Vancouver, and it relates to one of your mobile work tours of, of, of Hollywood. And so I'm not a big uh, X-Files fan, but you know the series was coming back after, after a decade, and, and 15 years ago, if you want, grab me for coffee, I'll tell you about how old they were almost dorky when I was biking out to UBC. Um, but the truth is out there, that's a bit of a slogan. And so the truth is out there, even in the X-Files series, that walking, cycling, and placemaking is what is great about building cities now, and it's what we all need to be doing. This is a screenshot from the series. Because what happened, I was waiting for the moment when Mulder and Scully, the two main characters on the show, when the truth is out there, so is the Hornby protected by Blade. <laughs> and so I just snapshot of this uh, from my TV. Yeah. And look how joyful and happy and healthy they are. It's not because they haven't seen each other in, in whatever decade, it's because they recognize what great cities is all about. <laughs> And so it's my privilege um, as, a, as a staff liaison for Council's Volunteer uh, Advisory Committee on Active Transportation and Transit and Placemaking, the Active Transportation Policy Council. I've really got to know Councillor uh, Heather Dio really well over the last few years. So it's my privilege uh, to have her come up uh, next and give you some remarks.